Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. This is Africa and that is Algeria. Now come on, let's see what's been happening there, shall we? Many thousands of years ago, the Neolithic peoples of what's now Algeria were farming and domesticating animals for livestock and hunting and dancing and... Wait, how do we know all this? Well, because they drew themselves doing it. This is Tassili Najer, and scratched and painted into the walls of the caves here are thousands of images depicting the daily lives of the ancient inhabitants, who apparently seemed to worship the devil and also shapeshift into mushrooms and walk around? Anyway, the mingled peoples of Algeria became the Berbers, the ethnic group that would thenceforth dominate North Africa. In getting control of the Sahara, the Berbers kicked out the Saninki peoples, among others, thus getting to rule over a whole lot of this. But if they thought of further expansion, they would have to think again, because in 900 BC, the Phoenicians arrived from the Near East and established colonies in North Africa. They would later be known as Carthaginians after Carthage, the major Phoenician city located in today's Tunisia. Carthage traded with the native Berbers, but also also enslaved them and encouraged them to join the Carthaginian army, which many did. Carthage's treatment of the Berbers could be quite cruel, and the Berbers never assimilated into the culture of their overlords. Carthage had been the dominant maritime power on the Mediterranean, but then along came Rome. Rome defeated Carthage in three successive wars. During the second of these Punic Wars, a Berber called Masinissa, allied with Rome, defeated his enemies and carved out a big slice of Algeria and ruled it as King of Numidia. Rome was cool with this, as whatever hurt Carthage was fine by them. Masinissa fathered over 40 sons and was still fighting aged 90. His descendants would rule Numidia until 40 BC, when Rome took over. The Berber peoples did not get along with the Romans, but Rome really got the region going, establishing garrisoned cities and making it an agricultural haven, a massively important supplier of grain and olive oil to the Roman world. Christianity came to Algeria in the 2nd century, and 200 years later it was considerably Christianized. Maybe the most influential Christian theologian ever, St. Augustine, was from the Roman Algerian city of Thagaste, and very likely a Berber. Augustine literally died as the Germanic Vandals were attacking his city. Vandal rule lasted a hundred years until the East Roman Byzantines regained it, but whoop, here come the Arabs. It's the mid-7th century, and the Arabs are invading everywhere they can to make people submit to the new religion of Islam, and Algeria is no exception. The Berber warrior queen and priestess Kahina resisted the Arab invasion for several years, but the determined Muslims came back and her army was defeated, and she herself was killed in battle. Islam and the Arabic language steadily permeated Algeria over the centuries, totally transforming it. The Fatimid Caliphate left Muslim Berber dynasties in charge, but wars with other Berber tribes continued. Muslim Berber dynasties in Morocco also made a habit of invading Algeria. There followed 300 years of the Berber kingdom of Tlemcen, which spent most of its time fighting off Moroccan invaders, while also being an important centre of Islamic learning, and a trade hub for the Mediterranean. This ceased after the Ottoman Turks took over. The Turks would also rule 300 years. They made Algiers the regional capital, but most infamously extended the North African pirate operation into a massive enterprise. The Barbary pirates led raids all over Europe, even as far as Iceland, killing and enslaving Christians, sometimes thousands at a time, usually avoiding warships they would target vulnerable merchant ships, take the stuff on them, and sail away. The captives would be shipped back to Muslim ports, and if not ransomed for a tidy sum, sold to Arab or Turkish slave owners as part of their extensive slave trades. It has been estimated that between 1500 and 1800, over one million Europeans were enslaved by the Barbary pirates. Christian powers, of course, fought back, frequently bombarding Algiers and smashing it into submission. The Muslims would then sign a treaty or something, but then soon break it and the whole thing repeated. As European naval expertise and technology increased. The Barbary pirates' power diminished and declined, and by the time America defeated them in two wars, they were pretty much finished. France finished the job in 1830, when they swept in and conquered the whole country. Thousands of Europeans moved to cities like Algiers and Oran, bringing European industry, schools, banks, and modern agricultural methods that sharply increased food production. The years went by, and the Algerian people grew more and more displeased with French rule. Western medicine, infrastructure, and technology were good, but they wanted to rule them themselves, and the French didn't allow them to hold public meetings, carry firearms, or even to leave town without permission. Now what better time to fight for independence than when your ruler is weakened? Europe was crippled after World War II, and so in 1954, the Algerian War of Independence began. It was a very bloody affair, filled with terrorism, kidnappings, and guerrilla attacks on the Algerian side, and excessively vicious French responses, like slaughtering whole villages in revenge. Between 350,000 and 1 million Algerians were killed in the war, but Algeria achieved 
achieved independence after centuries of foreign rule. The French Algerians migrated to France, as did as many pro-French Muslims as possible. Those who couldn't make it were hunted down and killed for treachery. A constitution was drafted and one Ahmed Ben Bella became the first president. But after the celebrations ended, the Algerians were in a bit of a pickle. Many skilled workers were now gone, and... There followed a time of unrest and uprisings, and in June 1965, Bella was overthrown by this guy, Wari Boumedien, who wanted Algeria to get on its feet before getting tangled in politics. There were serious riots in 1988, and elections held in 1990 and 91 saw Islamic extremists winning the vote. The army did not want this, and barged in to stop it, resulting in the Algerian Civil War, where many thousands were killed. The government eventually won, and in 1996, the constitution was changed to ban radical Islamist parties from running for office. 1999 saw Abdel Aziz Bouteflika elected president, who made it his mission to bring peace, reform and stability to this troubled land. He led Algeria for 20 years, winning every election despite increasingly severe health problems. Mass outrage erupted when he said he'd run for a fifth term, and finally he backed down and decided not to run. Algeria has had quite a hectic history, but in spite of it, has managed to achieve a high human development index and is pressing on to meet the challenges it faces today, and we wish them the best of luck. What do you think? the future holds for Algeria. Comment below, but for now, bye-bye.